Thunder on the Wind by Skylia. Chapter 76. Fare thee well. Warning. This chapter contains more adult content, so to maintain the PG-13 rating of this channel, I have removed those parts and rewritten it as best I can. To read the chapter in its entirety, please visit the link in the description. I still don't like this. Tony said, Tony! Loki warned, lying down on the bed again. It had to be a special skill to make his name sound like so many things at once. No, I get it, but I don't have to like it. Tony said, Can we stop arguing about this? Loki asked. I would just rather go with you. Tony said, I'm not going to risk you when it's unnecessary. Loki said, I'm a big boy, you know. Tony said, So am I. I could take care of myself for a few days without you. Now there was some anger in Loki's tone, so Tony moved closer to him. You know that's not what I mean. Tony said, there are just too many things we don't know. What if Rey wants something you cannot do? What if Thor can't convince Odin? What if the Fae won't be friendly with that hatchet there? Seriously, why can't you take Hatchet with you? He's banished from Alfheim, for one. Loki said, I won't take him there before I talked with Frey about it. Secondly, I won't leave you without magical protection. I'll take Drongo with me and Thor will be there too. Stop being worried. Tony sighed. They argued about this probably about a dozen times already, but Tony was still not happy about it. Did you, you do then? Tony said. Loki looked at him. I know that you... And B are a lot closer now than you used to be, but I won't leave her here without both Drongo and Juyu. I could take one of them, not both. And if I have to choose... Okay, I know, this is a diplomatic journey for the most part, so Drongo can help you more than Juyu. You could take both Juyu and B. And leave just you and Hatchet? Absolutely not! I'll let Bruce do, and I could call Rhodey if I need help. Tony said, I'm trying not to make a big fanfare out of this trip. I can't show up with a whole entourage. Drongo will be enough. Everything will be fine. Loki reassured him for like the hundredth time. Fine. Tony asked, It's this will be the longest time we've spent apart since we were taken that day. It makes me twitchy. It's just three days, love. Loki said, pulling him closer. Tony sighed again and settled down at Loki's side. I would still rather go with you. Next time, I promise. Loki smiled. Tony was known for being stubborn, but Loki was a whole different level. Tony knew very well when Loki was not going to budge. He knew it the first time they argued about this trip, and he knew it even now. And yes, he knew that this was Loki's burden to carry, and that he had to answer for the things he did on his own, and it STILL made him uneasy! Don't think we won't go after you if you're not back in three days. Downey said, I know. Loki said, I wouldn't expect anything else. Well, that was one thing they agreed on about this journey then. By force activity by the Avengers Tower, Jarvis announced. I can confirm that Thor has left. That's our cue then, Loki said. He was in his Allen door armor, not the old one, but the newly designed one Tony made a couple of months ago when the old breastplate got damaged. That was not a fun day. He still engraved it with snakes, though. Something's just never changed. He also wore the van braces that had energy crystals embedded in them. He technically didn't need them because he had full access to his magic, but they could still be useful. Tony even went as far as invoking rule number two and make Loki carry one of the new guns he's been working on. Yes, he was out of the arms industry, but these were for personal use. He wanted to make the guns that included the stun function he came up with for his suit. It was not easy to incorporate both energy and electric crystals into the weapon, but he was a genius for a reason. He also planned to design guns that only had an electric mode. If he actually went through with it, he could get back in business a little. They would be perfect for law enforcement. The one in Loki's holster was still a dual mode gun, though. Drongo also armored up just a little. Tony was not ready with his full armor yet. He needed to come up with a whole new design because of the style Drongo fought in. What was perfect for Loki 
or even Juyu or Hatchet, would constrict Jongo's movements. So we only had arm and shoulder guards for now. He said it was more than enough for defense. Tony didn't try to argue with him. The gun that Tony was designing for him was also still just a prototype, which should work fine. But Jongo insisted that he would be fine with that guns. The Yggdrasil was not the old power, but he could harness enough of its force to be anything but defenseless. Again, Tony didn't argue with him because there was really no point. You know, I really expected you to switch back to your Asgardian armor, Tony said. Why would I do that? Loki asked. When I have an enchanted Allendor armor made by my beloved. Sweet tiger, Tony smiled. And I'm making a statement, in a way, Loki added. But I am not the same man I used to be, so I won't stand to be treated as such. It's better to show your alliances right at the start. Do you not in? Plus, you look badass. That may have been also a factor behind my choice. Loki smirked. Diva. Tony chuckled and pulled him closer for one last kiss. Losing the horns was definitely a good choice, Bruce said, walking into the room. Tony didn't think he would come, but he was glad he did, even if it was only to say bye to Drongo. Are you sure you don't want me to take you back to New York before I leave, Dr. Banner? Loki asked, ignoring the comment. You told Captain Rogers that you would leave by now. Now it's fine. I'll leave in the afternoon, Bruce said. I can get some work done on my way there. Bruce wanted to get a few things from the tower since his stay in Malibu turned longer and longer. He figured leaving while Loki was gone was the best solution because not even Fury could argue about that. As you wish, Loki shrugged. You can come pick me up when you get back, Bruce added. Okay, where the heck is Hatchet again? Tony asked, only he was missing. He's on his way, so Jarvis said. Sure enough, the elf walked into the room a moment later, carrying a small wooden box in his hand. Yes, I'm late. Not my fault, he said. I would have appreciated more than two days' notice. Hatchet was just as displeased about Loki leaving him behind as Tony was. It was a rare moment of perfect unity between them. He marched up to Loki and handed the box over. Loki raised a questioning eyebrow. It's for Baba Queen, he said. A gift. Well, sort of an inside joke to remind her how much she likes me. I sealed it with a spell of mine, so she should have no doubt that it's for me. Also, tell her that I would have gone to visit, but I'm banished. And bloody ignore Claridia, if she's there, and don't comment on Gorland Beard, he gets busy. Hatchet, I know how to deal with the Fey, Loki interrupted, and they know me. The one is in Wolves Woods know you, Hatchet. But Bubba Queen lives beyond the borders, and even the ones who know you can be dangerous, so don't be reckless. I know her. I may even love her on some days, but she has a very strange sense of humor. You have to be careful. It will be fine, Loki reassured him, the same tone he used on Tony. If you're not making time, I'm going to get you, Hatchet said firmly. And we all know how bad I am at traveling between realms, so don't make me. Loki smiled and shook his head, then pulled the elf into a hug. I'll be back in time, he promised. You better be, Hatchet said, squeezing him tightly. We should be on our way then, Jango said. Daylight's wasting, as they say. Loki let go of Hatchet and nodded, stepping back. He looked at Tony, then at Hatchet, then huffed. It's just three days! You two are being ridiculous! He said, but Tony could tell that he was not really angry about it. You better get going before they start arguing again! Juju warned. He was nodding, agreeing with her, while Bruce tried to hide his smile. Loki didn't need more prompting. Jarvis darkened the windows in the room without command. They were reflective like a mirror this way and big enough even for Drongo to walk through them. The way it shimmered and shifted under Loki's hand reminded Tony of the first time he saw this happening, just before Loki showed up that day. It only took a moment for him to get ready, and then Loki reached a hand back to grab hold of Drongo's wrist. The next second, they slid through the flat glass surface. They didn't just walk through it, they literally seemed to get sucked into it. The five of them stared at their own reflections for a few moments in silence once they were gone. That looked really cool, Juyu announced then, and now I'm going back to my movie. B followed her out, and Bruce left a moment later. Padgett and Tony took the longest to look away and leave. Getting himself distracted by work for the time to pass faster was a good plan, um, but it didn't go that well.
He decided to take the time to look over the progress of his major Stark Industries projects. Pepper was handling the business side, but Tony insisted to supervise the manufacturing itself from time to time, even if not in person. The air filtering systems were made over in their HQ in Beijing, because the biggest market for the city-sized filters would be in China and Japan. Of course, other metropolises could need it too, but yeah. Pepper said it would be best to let them handle it. Their Berlin HQ insisted on being the ones to manufacture the solar panels. Tony wasn't surprised. The first big customers for ARC reactors were European countries as well. Pepper agreed, and Tony let her work out the details. The water filtering systems were being built in New York, which of course left the LA HQ with the more secretive projects. Preparing prototypes and such to show off things like the artificial gravity generator to future potential buyers. Pepper was convinced that the government was going to eat from their hands pretty soon, even without any sort of weapons. Stark Industries' stocks were skyrocketing ever since Tony made his big debut in New York. As soon as they put their new products on the market, things were going to turn even better. And oh, he couldn't wait until Pepper heard about Tony's non-lethal weapons designs. Roni was going to be over the moon. Hearing that too, Tony was sure of it. Once he had enough prototypes to show off how effective his electric guns could be, and not just as handguns, but even as sniper rifles, there would be plenty of contractors. There was literally no other stun gun on Earth that could rival the range and efficiency of what Tony came up with. His technology was light years ahead of them. Not that business was Tony's biggest concern lately, but it was good to know that things went well. One less thing to worry about and all that. Of course, by the time he was done with everything, only two hours passed. So we spent another hour and a half tinkering with the Firebird 2 and his stun gun designs. Then he had to get out of his workshop because he was not getting any real work done. He spent like 10 minutes staring at one of Hatchet's metal flowers on his working table. He knew that was a sign that his mind was too distracted to work properly. So he went back up to the ground floor and sat down to watch whatever Juyu was watching. Tony joked sometimes that she was catching up on being a teenager by sitting on a couch and watching TV almost all day, but he really didn't mind. It's not like she had many relaxing days in her childhood. Nobody could begrudge her some lazing around. She was watching some animated flick this time. So what's this then? Tony asked. It's about a smart blue-skinned alien villain with a penchant for leather and dramatics. She said. You're kidding me. Tony laughed. Nope. She shook her head. Do Loki have minions? I don't know. He mind controlled a few people. Tony said. Does that count? Nah, those are henchmen of evil. Juicy, you said seriously. What kind of movies was she watching? Honestly, she was definitely getting a good grip on the slang, though. Tony couldn't help but be proud of that. Minions are usually some creatures or beasts or something, she continued, brainlessly following around their master. Well, he has hatchet then. Tony said after a beat, he timed it perfectly because Ju Yu snorted her drink up her nose and started coughing and laughing at the same time. Tony couldn't help but laugh too. Hatchet would have had a few words about that comment. It was a shame that he wasn't there to hear it. Sir, intruder- Oh! Jarvis tried to warn, but then the windows exploded. Glass shattered and smoke filled the room almost immediately. Smoke grenades. Tony recognized the sound. Tony and Juju both ran, trying to get a better cover than the couch. She screamed something Tony couldn't hear, then something shattered again. Tony had no clue what it was, but it happened way too close. He felt a sharp stab of pain in his shoulder. It made him lose his balance, and he fell over. He hit his head as he landed. It smacked loudly. Uh, to something blunt, his whole skull vibrated from the impact. Juju shouted again over the sudden noise in the room while things went fuzzy around the edges then black 